Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to play d4. Let me just see if everything is okay. Everything should be okay. I'm playing the same guy again. Why am I playing the same guy again? I think I played him yesterday. How is this possible? Okay, this time I'm going to play c4. Uh, he plays e6. I'm gonna go knight c3. Okay, uh, I'll play the exchange. Why am I playing the same guy again? How is this possible? Are there no people playing on 22, 2300? How, how, how? I'm playing the same three people over and over again, I have a feeling. In any case, we have the exchange. Queen's Gambit declined, which is becoming one of my favorite openings. To be honest, uh, it's. I like it because white can choose whether he wants or she wants an aggressive game or a positional game, and I like that choice. I'm not a big fan of openings which only lead to one type of position, uh, and and this gives me the flexibility to choose uh, between different different positions. Ah, do I go h4? I mean, I could go h4. It's it's not the losing move, but I'm, I'm gonna play bishop h4. He should go knight e4 immediately or rook e8. Knight e4 is... Well, okay, knight e4 loses a pawn for now, but rook e8 and then knight e4 should be his plan. And now I can choose between knight e2 with ideas of f3 e4, knight f3 with ideas of knight e5, knight f3 with ideas of castles and a3 rook b1 and so on. Uh, I could also go knight f3 and castle queen side. I could also go knight e2, go f3 and castle queen side with the follow up of g4. So it's a very flexible opening which leads to. Okay, now bishop e6 is a line which I usually try to punish with knight e2, knight f4. So I'm going to go for that again. Now he's blocking knight e4. So he doesn't have knight e4. Uh, and if he plays knight bd7, which people usually play, uh, then I go knight f4, winning the bishop pair. So bishop e6, I think, is an inaccurate move. Although people keep playing it against me. Now it's just hard to develop, and if he goes bishop g4, then he's wasted the tempo, I can just go f3, it helps my setup. So, I don't think bishop e6 is good. And I wonder why people keep playing it, I'm actually gonna try to find some high level games with this. I've never had it in a tournament game, because I only played this in a tournament game once, actually twice, but the first time was like five years ago and I played a 1500 rated player, but last time I played was against 2350, an international master, and I drew, although he played the setup with early a5 and without c6. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna try to find some games with bishop e6 played by strong players, because I, I, I don't see why this would work, I just have knight f4 with tempo. Okay, I, I mean, I, I don't get it. So let's see what his idea is. I mean, I'm still controlling e4. Uh, he doesn't have bishop f5. If he plays bishop g4, I just go h3. So basically, I just get the bishop pair for nothing. And look at my light squared bishop. That's my good bishop. Of course, once I take, he could have ideas of. Uh, e5, e4, but two bishops are two bishops. Of course, g5 doesn't work because I take on e6 first with tempo on the queen. Okay. So I take on e6, uh, and then f6, bishop e7, he has rook f2. So I should probably take uh, on e7 first, 
or simply play bishop g3 because if I have the bishop pair I don't want to trade one of my bishops so bishop g3 if bishop g3 what can he do he cannot take on e3 or on f2 or on h2 he doesn't have g5 yeah I definitely don't want to trade off my dark squared bishop for now because f2 is sort of tender do I have any ideas of bishop h7 check now that he's moved his knight away bishop h7 king h8 no I don't think so so I'm just going to play bishop g3 seems like the most sensible option I can still grab the bishop on e6 later he doesn't have bishop d6 and now f2 has been defended strategically <clears throat> trading off the dark squared bishops looks like a good idea because his bishop on e7 is a very good piece because his pawns are on light squares but tactically since I plan to take on e6 I, I don't think that's good because I'm going to be running into rook f2 or knight f2 so he wants to play c5 uh, I can see that but if he plays c5 uh, I'm going to have uh, knight d5 so I'm thinking queen e2 even though it seems like a strange move but it's actually threatening knight e6 f6 and queen g4 so on queen e2 he has to waste another tempo on knight f6 or on h5 which loses a pawn so queen e2 if c5 I can go knight e6 queen e2 if knight f6 I've prevented c5 so I can simply castle so okay I'm just going to play queen e2 queen e2 seems like a good move it comes with tempo at least and also I'm getting away from the from the c file so okay he still doesn't have he still doesn't have c5 but now he has bishop g4 or does he? I can play f3 if he plays bishop g4 so I think I can simply castle and if he plays c5 I cannot take on d5 now because the knight is defending so maybe it's time to grab this bishop my knight is kind of awkwardly placed he's gonna play c5 so take on e6 c5 the take on e6 f6 castle c5 Ooh, can I go knight b5 there no no he can go c4 Okay, I'm taking this bishop I'm taking the bishop and I'm gonna try preparing e4 so he wants to play c5 I cannot prevent it I've weakened the light square significantly and maybe I could have some ideas of bishop e5 so bishop e5 preventing e5 knight, if knight e5 then d5 the knight has to go to e8 and I have queen h5 queen g6 he doesn't have rook f6 because I have a pawn on e5 bishop e5 seems interesting although I don't have a threat so it doesn't really do much
Am I afraid of c4? That's the question. I don't think I'm afraid of c4, so I'll just castle. And after c5, I'm not going to take. I'm going to allow him to take if he wishes to do so. Because c4 would actually help me play bishop c2 and queen d3. For now, he cannot play e5. Okay, he plays c5. Uh, I'm just going to get my rook to the c file uh, with rook c1, I think. In, so in the case of c4, I can play uh, bishop b1 instead of bishop d3. So rook c1 should be okay. I don't think he's in time to play c4, b5 and all of that stuff, firstly because on b5 I can take it. Uh, I need to get rid of the f6 knights, not one knight, two knights. Because if I'm going to use the light squared weaknesses, I'm going to need more pieces in the attack. And I cannot get my queen in with the knight on f6. <clears throat> and of course, if he ever plays c4, I can undermine it with b3. Okay, he moves the knight away. Now that's interesting, because now I do have bishop e5. Unless he just goes back. Okay, I like bishop e5. I'm going to play bishop e5. If he goes back... <clears throat> Uh, I'm not going to do anything because I would like to play d5 if he ever takes. But that just means that he wasted a clean tempo. Now I think the light squared weaknesses are becoming apparent. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Please take with the bishop. Please take. Okay, I'm going bishop b1 or f4. Bishop b1 or f4. Bishop b1 or f4. I actually could go f4 and then queen f2, queen g3, queen g6. I like f4, I'm playing f4. Now if he takes, I get to recapture with my f-pawn, opening up some more lines. And that now I also have rook f3 ideas. I love my position. I think this is a good attacking position. I don't know if I'm clearly better, but uh, I have the bishop pair for now, and I don't think he can trade off my dark squared bishop without dire consequences. Also, e6 is a weakness, and the light squares around his king are, are very weak. And his knights seem weird the knight on f6 is defending everything and it's a good piece but the knight on b6 just seems like a bad piece i think it's completely misplaced a 
Of course, for now, knight c4 simply loses a pawn and comes with tempo on e6 in the end. Rook c7 would be a funny blunder, although there's no reason for him to play it. I'd have bishop d6 and knight b5. I don't win the a7 pawn, I tried to make it work, but he has queen b8. Now I just need to get more pieces into play. Again, I'm not afraid of c4, I'm not afraid of cd. I'm gonna play rook f3, rook h3. Rook f3, rook h3, and then queen f2, queen g3, and queen g6. If he plays knight c4 now, I'm playing bishop b1, which is a move I want to play anyway, because I want to get on the light squares and threaten bishop takes f6. I don't think he can ever take on e5, because then his king is just cut off from the queen side and cannot cross the f file. I need to be slightly careful with rook f3, because knight e4 would then be annoying because my rook is hanging but I think uh, I don't have to play rook f3 just yet wow he took this I don't believe it how can he get away with this wow okay I didn't think this was possible let's see what he has in mind This cannot work. It cannot work. Okay, so what's the best way to get my queen in? I feel like queen g4 is the best move. On queen e8, uh, rook f8, he has knight f8 or king f8. On king f8, rook f1, king g8. So that doesn't really work. Queen e8 seems to stop all of my ideas. On bishop b1, he probably plays rook f1. Do I have any bishop h7 check threats? I don't think so. Can I go queen h5 with tempo? I like queen h5 because I, I then also have bishop g6. Wait, I can play bishop g6 on queen e8 as well. <coughs> queen g4, queen e8, bishop g6. Leeches will restart in 9 minutes. Again, why is this happening every time I play? I need to stop playing at this hour. I hope nothing happens in 9 minutes. Queen g4, queen e8, bishop g6. He has to play queen e7. I need to remember that I have knight b5, knight d6 ideas. That's the way to include my last piece. Okay, I like queen g4. I'm gonna play queen g4 first. I don't want to move my bishop if I don't have to. This this also defends my uh, d4 pawn and prevents queen g5. Because on queen g5 he has I have queen e6 check. 
Of course, the threat is queen g6. If he exchanges on f1, he needs to be careful about knight takes d5 if he moves his knight. And if he plays knight g5, I have h4. I'm assuming he's gonna take on f1, but then I have knight b5. I don't know, this could be equal, but his knight on b6 is definitely an advantage for me. It's the only bad piece in play. Not that my knight on c3 is brilliant, but wait, I don't have to go knight b5, I can go knight e2, knight f4. Okay, so that's a good idea. So knight e2, with the idea of knight f4 and simply putting pressure on e6. That's even better. So let's say it's my move, knight e2, rook c1, rook c1. What does he do? Uh, I don't know, but my next move is knight f4. Hmm. Is my knight better on f4 or on d6? I think on f4. Because I don't care about the b7 pawn. I don't know why he's thinking he has to play queen e8. There are no other moves. He can exchange on f1 first, but I don't think that makes a difference. He's still gonna have to go queen e8. Maybe he's afraid of bishop g6, but in that case he simply has queen e7. And also, I don't really want to play bishop g6, because then it blocks my battery. Okay, he exchanges first. Now queen e8, I'm assuming. I don't... Wow, knight f8. Okay, this gives me some more time. Now I actually prefer my knight on d6. Simply because... Uh, Ah, wait, he has knight c4. Okay, knight b5, knight c4, bishop c4. Uh, let's say rook c4, <clears throat> attacking the d4 pawn. And then knight d6. Threatening rook f7 with mate on g7. I like that. Knight b5, knight c4. Wait, can I play rook f8? Rook f8... No, I don't have enough. Wait, maybe I do. Rook f8? King f8? Queen e6? At least I get a pawn. I don't think it's enough. I want my knight on b5 first. Because once he plays knight c4, he's threatening knight e3. That, that's the issue. So knight b5, knight c4. Can I ignore knight e3? Maybe I can. Ah, no, 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 no. He, he doesn't have... He doesn't have knight e3 because I have rook f8. And on queen f8, I have queen e6. And on king f8, I have... Uh, queen f3 check. Okay. So I'm playing knight b5. Ah, he has queen g5 now. But then I have rook f8. Oof, this is getting very interesting. Maybe I shouldn't have, have allowed queen g5. But I'm getting, yeah, he's, he plays queen g5 immediately. Oh, that makes me mad. Of course, I don't want to trade queens. Uh, 
Let's see if Rook F8 works. It definitely doesn't work. I need to avoid the queen trade, so I'm thinking queen f3. Queen f3 threatening queen f7. And maybe knight d6 as a follow up. Leeches will restart in two minutes. Oh, come on, please don't ruin this game. Okay, one thing is clear I'm not trading queens. So, queen f3 has to be the most sensible if rook f8 doesn't work. Okay, I'm playing. I'm, I'm just. Ah, oh, wait, he has. Does he have rook c1? On queen f3. Queen f3, rook c1. No, queen f8, Jesus. Okay. Okay, now let's go in with knight d6. <clears throat> now this is a very good knight. I would like to prevent knight c4, but if I play b3, he's gonna play rook c3. I need to move my queen so that I can play rook f7. But I don't see where to move my queen that doesn't allow queen g5. Unless I move it to e2, which threatens rook f7 and prevents knight c4, because if knight c4, I have knight c4, d c4, bishop c4. Okay, I like queen e2, the threat, rook f7. And if he plays queen g5 there, he can play queen g5 there. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What if I play queen h5? Queen h5, and if queen g5, I play queen e8, threatening rook f8. He plays queen e7. I can play rook f8, queen f8, queen e6 check, king h8. No, no, it still doesn't work. I need to threaten rook f7, but I don't see how. And the c1 square is always an issue. Okay, 
Okay, so let's just prevent queen g5. Let's just go h4. I'm just going to go h4. This prevents queen g5. For the moment, he doesn't have queen h4 because of queen f8. And now my next idea is moving the queen away and playing rook f7. That's a good move. I didn't see that. However, if I play queen f4, he cannot take it. Also, if I play queen g3, he cannot take it because I win a piece. So queen g3, if knight d6, e d6 wins. If he doesn't take, then I play rook f7. Yes, I, I, I got my idea in. Nice. The threat rook f7. He missed rook f7. That was the main idea. Yeah, now it's game over. I think he could have prevented it with something like queen d8. Instead of rook c6 just loses, but queen d8 was maybe a, an attempt. He has to give up his queen now. Okay, let's play h5 first to gain some more space. He has knight e7, knight f5. He has rook c1, but that could be deadly to queen f4. I need to speed up now. I'm material up and I should be winning, but nothing is certain yet. Let's take over the c1 square. I don't want to allow anything happening on c1. And then I'm going to push my pawns. So these squares are covered and that's important. So I think I can safely play g4, g5 and try and create a best pawn. As long as I'm covering c1, he has no checks, he has no tricks. If he plays knight h7, I'm snapping that knight off and then playing <coughs> queen f7. I cannot allow a blockade on g5, that would be bad. Okay, it appears that nothing has happened with the leeches restart. Okay, let's play b3 just... Okay, I'm giving away the c3 square. Uh, Nevertheless, I'm, I'm, I'm going to play b3. He has the c3 square. But if I go g5 and he doesn't take, so g5, rook c3, g6. He cannot take on d3. Okay, so, so I can go for this. And if he takes first, I'm threatening e7. Oh, g6 mate? Is g6 mate? He cannot take. g6. g6, rook d3, queen f7, king h8, queen takes f8, knight g8. 
queen takes e6. Rook takes d4. Yeah, that's winning. <clears throat> and I don't even play queen f8. I play queen takes e7. I think. If he takes on d3. But then he has rook f3. So maybe I do take on f8. He cannot defend the f7 square, so this is game over. It's going to be rook versus queen. And he's gonna have a knight on, on g8. Yeah, okay. If he does this, then I'm happy. I'm still covering the c1 square. So when I take, he checks, I go king g2, I'm covering c2, so everything is fine. I'm just threatening to win the knight on f8. One check and it's over. Yeah, this is game over. He, he doesn't have a move. There are no moves. I'm just gonna mate him or win the pawn on c4 or queen my e pawn. Oh, I'm so happy I got in rook f7. Okay. Uh, so let's win some material like this, I think. Maybe I need to slow down a bit. What does he want to do? He doesn't have knight e6, he doesn't have knight d7. If I go e6, he has rook e7. I take on c4. Okay, let's let's just start improving my king. Could I I don't see a move for him unless he plays something like rook e7. So let's just bring my king closer. There are no checks here, so I'm, I'm not in trouble. I'll just stick to the second rank, okay. Uh, so let's just pin the knight for now. This means that the knight cannot move and that the king cannot move. The only piece that can move is his rook, and now it doesn't have the c-file, doesn't have the f-file. <coughs> Now that I have his 8th rank, I'm fairly confident that there are no more tricks. But I will need to get my king into f5 somehow. Okay. Uh, let's just run him out of moves, because I, I don't see why not. I mean, he's going to be in Zugzwang in, in about two moves. <laughs> He's going to have rookie 6, rookie 7. <laughs> okay, he can still only move his king, uh, his rook. So let's just gain some more space. I want to get my pawn to a5. Okay, now where do I create this passed pawn? Can I go e6 now? e6, rook e7. Uh, no, I don't want to move my queen away. So let's create a passed pawn over here, I think. Yeah, let's just go there. No reason not to. I'll just get my king to a4 and push b5.
Okay, I am extremely happy with this game. I never actually got someone to be in a position where they can move their rook <laughs> and I can slowly improve. This is this is my dream come true. If this ever happened in a tournament game, I think I would jump from joy for hours afterwards. This is just pure agony for him. I mean, I I, I would hate to be in his position. And now this is it. After rook e7, uh, I play uh, king d6, and he resigns. He has to play rook e6. I have I play queen e6, knight e6, king e6, and game over. Or I can just beat him slowly by taking on d5. But I, I feel like this is way more pleasant. I love this game. This this is probably my favorite game ever on the channel. And it, it all started with that weird bishop e6 idea, where I get to win the bishop pair. I weaken the light squares and I just played on from there. This is not Zugzwang, my friend, because I'm not going to do anything. I can just pick up your material and you have to play King H8. Yeah, I'm not playing rematch. Uh, I This is just perfect. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the game. Now, I want to start with this... Yeah, here. After Bishop H4. Bishop E6 has been played 14 times. Can you guys see this? Yes. Okay, let's just see the evaluations first. Okay, one blunder, two inaccuracies, one mistake. Let's see until it finishes. One blunder, four inaccuracies. Okay. This wasn't as perfect as yesterday's game and the one before that. 99% accuracy with the blunder? How is that possible? 94. Okay, let's let's leave it to finish. Yeah, 96 is weird. And who played it? Huzman. I have no idea who that is. That's the highest rated player. And after knight e2, people actually do play knight bd7 and then knight f4. How can this be good? Okay. He played knight g4 here. Now let's turn on the engine from here. I think, yeah, bishop g3. Wait, bishop h7? Okay, bishop g g3 is the best move. Rook c8, I played queen e2, just threatening knight e6, he played knight f6, I took, he took, I castled, he played c5. Okay, this was an inaccuracy, rook ad1 is better. I don't know why I would want my rook on the d-file. I don't understand f4 before I move my bishop, because he can always prevent bishop h4 by playing knight e8. Okay, I think rook ac1, even though it's a mistake, is, is a sensible move. Knight b6. Okay, dc5? Why? dc5, bishop c5, knight b5. And what's the... Ah, the point is to get the knight to the d4 square. Is it? Wait. He just loses a pawn? Does he just lose a pawn? Okay, this is too much. What's the what's the point? He doesn't have to take it. Okay, this is just crushing strategically. I did I didn't see this. I played bishop e5. He played bishop d6 and I played f4, which is okay. Takes takes and now bishop e5. D5? Ah, d5 is a very nice move. The idea behind d5 is that you want to go knight b5, knight d4 with pressure on e6. Yeah, I should have done this. And now, let's say here. Okay, this fails tactically, but let's say he doesn't take my pawn. Let's say he does this. Again, it fails tactically, but it doesn't matter. This is why d5 is nice. But it took f5, I thought it's a good move. 
Rook f1 here. Knight of 8. I thought he had to play queen e8 or queen e7. Knight b5 is good. Queen g5, queen f3, great. Queen e7, knight d6 here. H4. H4 is a weird idea, but I, I was always struggling. So I, I wanted to play rook f7, but I couldn't make it work because he always has queen g5. So the only way I could prevent queen g5 was h4. And he does play knight c8 and just... Okay, queen f... Why would I play queen f4 if I want to play rook f7? I played queen g3 because I want to play rook f7. Yeah, and as I said, queen d8 is probably the only move that defends. And now I can start building my attack. I'm not sure I would have given up this bishop. Wait, bishop, knight. Look. What happens on knight? Knight takes. Ah, it's my move. Sorry. Ah, I can play h5. Okay. If someone asked me to evaluate this position, I wouldn't think white is better. Because I'm gonna lose my pawn. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Now rook f7. And this is game over. <laughs> now let's look at the final position. So I just took space. And... <laughs> this is my favorite position I've ever played on the channel. He cannot do it. <laughs> Mate in 9? Wait, how? Ah, I have e6. Okay, I didn't see that. I just wanted to suffocate him slowly. Yeah, and if if uh, rook e7, I was going to play king d6. And after, let's say, here, here, and here, and here, and here. This. Okay, I'm, I'm very happy. Let's see, 94% accuracy. He had a 90% accuracy game. That's weird, because I, I, this cannot be correct, because obviously I made a couple of mistakes. He made a lot of mistakes. How can he be 90% accurate? No matter. Uh, thank you for watching. Obviously, I'm very happy. See you tomorrow. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye.